Hello students, welcome to a new chapter in Python which is called Data Handling. So this is the part one of this particular chapter and in this part we are going to discuss about the core data types in Python. So let's start with the concept of data types. So what is a data type? Data types are a means to identify the type of data. So in Python we can deal with different type of data like integers, strings, floats, complex numbers, list, tuples, etc. So all these are a means to identify the type of data. Just by looking at the syntax or looking at the um, rules, we can say what type of data these are. So let's see the type core data types which are available in Python. They are numbers, strings, list, tuples and finally dictionary. So in this unit, we are going to see an overview of all the data types which are which you are seeing in the screen. Let's begin with numbers. So the number data types are used in Python to store numeric values. So if our main aim is to store numeric values, then we will use the numbers data type. Let's see the classification of numbers. So numbers can be classified as integers, floating point numbers, Boolean numbers, complex and complex numbers. So let's begin with integers. So what are integers? Integers may be defined as numbers without fractional part. That means if we consider the numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all this and also the negative numbers like minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, all this are known as integers. For example, 0, minus 6, 41, minus 7, 43, all these are some examples of integers. Let's go to the next number data type, which is the Boolean type. So this data type is used to represent the truth values, true or false. So if you want to represent true or false, then you will use the data type, which is known as the Boolean data type. Okay. So here one represents true and zero represents false. Here we have only two acceptance, one for true and zero for false. So if I give bool 0 in the interactive mode, I'll get the answer as false. Similarly, if I give bool 1 in the interactive mode, I'll get the answer as true. Let's try to implement Boolean data type and see. I'll show the integers also. So if I write just a equals to minus 4, then this is an integer. How to check the data type? By using the type function. If I write type and within bracket the variable name 4, I'm getting the data type which is class int. Now let's see about the boolean data type. If I write a equals to true, okay. So then if I check as type a, I'll see that it is of class bool. Bool stands for boolean. So if I write a equals to let's say false and if I want to check the data type like type a, I'll get the answer as class what is the class here? The class is bool here. Similarly, if I write, let's say bool 0, you will get the answer as false because in Boolean data type, 0 indicates false. Similarly, if I write bool 1, I will get the result as true for obvious reasons. Let's go to the next data type, which is the floating point numbers. So a number having fractional part are called floating point numbers. So those numbers which has a fractional part, those numbers are referred to as floating point numbers. For example, 2.9, 6.78, minus 24.5, 12.0, all these are known as floating point numbers. Now, what is the advantage of floating point numbers over integers? So the advantage of floating point numbers over integers is that floating point numbers may be used for representing integers also. So if there is a situation where a variable can take both integers and floating point numbers, then you can use floating point numbers safely because they can take integers also. Let's say uh, you are appearing for an exam of five subjects and finally you need to make a Python program to calculate the total mark scored by a student in the five subjects. Now in a subject, let's say the total marks is 100, out of 100 a student may get 60 also or a student may get 60.5 also. So in those situations, it's better to use floating point numbers because it can take the take up the integer values also. 
let's go to the disadvantage of floating point numbers so the disadvantage of floating point numbers are that floating point operations are slower as compared to integer operations so you should take floating point numbers only in those situations where you are very sure that it will obviously be an uh, floating point number or if it requires a mixture of both integers and floating point numbers but if you are sure like for example roll number roll number can never be a floating point number so in those situations even though you can take float you should not take float because floating point operations are slower as compared to integer operations now let's go to the next concept which is the complex numbers so what is a complex number a number of the form a plus b i where i represents an imaginary number it is called as a complex number here i stands for root over minus one and if we square both sides what you will get i square equals to root over minus one square if we do then the root over will go away and will get as minus one so come but in python complex numbers are represented by the letter j instead of i in mathematics it is represented by the letter i but in python it is represented by the letter j so complex numbers are represented in python in the form of a plus bj where j is an imaginary number here a and b represents real number while j represents an imaginary number python always displays complex numbers in parentheses when they have a non-zero real part we'll get to know when i give you an example of this for example if i write a complex number a equals to 2 plus 5 j here 2 and 5 are real numbers but j is the imaginary number or the complex number so it represents a complex number where 2 is the real part and 5 is the which part 5 is the imaginary part so if i want to see the answer what i'll do i'll just type a in the interactive mode and i'll get the result as 2 plus 5 j and you can see that you are getting the result within parenthesis means within bracket now why you are getting the result in bracket because the real part that is 2 is a non-zero part so complex numbers are represented using braces if the real part is non-zero but if the real number part is zero then the complex number is displayed as it is for example if i write a equals to 0 plus 9j here the real number part is 0 so upon displaying a i'll get the result as 9j now the result will not be within parenthesis now if you want to extract the real number part and the uh, imaginary number part separately then you can do so by using a variable name dot real then the real part will be extracted if you want to extract the imaginary number part then you'll give a dot imag and you'll get the imaginary number part let's try to implement it so if i write, just write x equals to 9 plus 2 j and if i display x sorry if i display x then i'm getting the result within bracket why i'm getting the result within bracket because the real number part that is 9 is what is 9 here 9 is a non-zero number now if i want to extract it individually i'll just write x dot real so i'll get only the real number pi part if i write x dot imag imaginary then i'll get only the imaginary number part now let's take x equals to 0 plus 2j and then display x so now i'm getting only the imaginary number part and it is not within parenthesis so remember if you are using the real number part as a zero then it will not be represented within parenthesis but if the real number part is a non-zero one then it will be represented within what then it will be represented within parenthesis let's go to the next one which is the string so what is string a string may be defined as a sequence of characters enclosed within quotes so if there are a sequence of characters like a name let's say abc or let's say pqr then it is called as a sequence of characters and if you enclose it within quotes single or double or triple in case of multi-line strings then it will come under strings a string can hold any type of known characters letters numbers and special characters so it's not that in a string you have to hold only the alphabets it can hold letters also for example if i write a equals to one two three then it is an integer 
but if I put a equals to 1, 2, 3 within quotes, then it will not be an integer, it will be a string. So these are some examples of strings like PQR, Raj, 76, Z1, ZP, etc. Now strings are immutable. Now what is the concept of immutable? I'll just explain it to you. Before that, you just see an example. Let's say I take a string as Maharishi. Here, each character in memory, it can be visualized as you are seeing in the screen. Now, if we say, see from left to right, there are nine characters. So it will have some index. Each character will have an index starting from left to right. So if I consider the index from left to right, it is known as your forward index. For example, what is the index of M? It is zero. What is the index of A? It is one and so on. But there is another index here, which is known as the backward index. If we consider from right hand side to left hand side, then it will begin at minus one and it will end at minus n. Okay. So what we can do, we can after a string has been assigned a value, then after that we cannot change individual character of the characters of the string. Let's try to understand string in a better way. So I'll just take this as an example. So if I write a equals to within quotes, within quotes means it is a string Maharishi. Then after that, if I want to extract each and every character of the string individually. So if I write a zero, I'll get what is present at the zero index m. So m has been displayed. So if I write a two, what is present at the second index, h is present at the second index, so h has been displayed here. So if I write a, let's say 5, then what will be displayed? i will be displayed. 5 means this i we are talking about. Similarly, we can use the negative index also. If I write a minus 2, then I should get h. Yes, I am getting h. So because this is minus 1, this is minus 2. But we cannot use an index which is out of range. For example, if I write a 15, then I'll get an error. And what is the error? If you can read here, the error is the index error, string index out of range. So if you are trying to uh, use such an index which does not exist in the string, then you will get obviously an error. Okay. So here are some more points. So the individual elements of a string can be accessed using its, its index either forward or backward. So if I write a2, I'm getting h. If I write a minus 3, I'm getting what? S. Valid string indices are 0 to n minus 1 for forward indexing. So if we are using the concept of forward indexing, then the indices are from 0 to n minus 1. For example, here in this string, how many characters are there? We have nine characters. So the indices are from zero to how much? Zero to eight. Means means zero to n minus one. And from minus one to minus n for backward indexing. If we consider the backward indexing here, backward indexing starts from minus one and it ends at how much? It ends at minus nine because there are nine characters in the string Maharishi. Using invalid indices leads to an error. As I have seen here, if I write a13, is there the 13th index? No, there is no 13th index. Therefore, I am getting an index error like string index out of range. Next is strings are immutable and hence item assignment is not possible. So as what is the meaning of the word immutable? Immutable means after a string, after a variable has been assigned a string, we cannot change the individual item of the items of the string. Let's try to change the individual items of the string. So now what we have at a0, we have m. So if I want to change it, changes can be done in this manner. Usually if I write a0 equals to, let's say instead of m, I'm trying to replace m by x and then I'll press the enter key. But here I'm getting an error. Why am I getting an error? It is because of the fact that strings are immutable. Immutable means once you assign a value to a variable in a, which is a string, then we cannot assign, change the individual items of the string. But in place of a, if I want to write a different string, like let's say a equals to, let's say Raj then we won't get any error. But if you want to change the individual index, then it will give you an error because strings are immutable. So read the last point. 
assigning an already assigned string with a string is possible but item assignment is not possible so you cannot assign individual items a different value in a string but you can assign the whole string to a new string by using the same variable itself let's go to the next data type which is the list so what is list a list may be defined as a list of comma separated values of any data type between square brackets so the values within a list are enclosed within your uh, which bracket this is the third bracket so if you want to store a list of values within a single variable then it is done with the help of the concept of what which is done with the help of the concept of list now these are some examples of list like within third bracket if i write 8 comma 4 comma 3 comma 2 comma 992 or the second one then these are known as nothing but list lists are mutable mutable means they are modifiable modifiable means after creating a list you can change the indexes of uh, items of individual elements for example if i write a equals to 9 12 54 this is called as a list for displaying it if we, if we just type a then we'll see the individual items of the list so if i write print a then the entire list will be displayed in front of you so let's try to implement list and see here so if i write a equals to let's say 7 12 and let's say 16 so this is a list if i just write a then the list will be displayed now if i want to change the individual so here also there are indexes from forward to backward similar to strings for example 7 will have an index 0 12 will have an index 1 and 16 will have an index of two similarly negative indexes are also possible here using the concept of backward indexing like 16 is minus 1 12 is minus 2 and 7 is minus 3 so if i write a 0 i'm getting 7 if i write a 1 i'm getting 12 similarly if i write a 2 i'm getting 16 now in place of the first index 12 let's say i want to make it as 33 then it can be done in this manner a1 equals to 33 and i'm not getting any error how to see the updated list just type a here and i'm getting the updated list now why this is possible in case of list this is possible because lists are mutable mutable means you can change the individual items of the list after the list creation that's why it is said that lists are mutable let's go to the next data type which is tuples a tuple may be defined as a list of comma separated values of any data types between square first bracket so tuple is also similar to list in the sense that tuple also consists of a list of values of any data type but it is enclosed between first bracket now what is the difference with this, this first bracket makes the difference that this first bracket makes is that with first bracket we can identify the list to be a tuple and tuples are immutable immutable means once a tuple is created you cannot change the individual items of the tuple so these are some examples of tuple so if i write 84329922 these comes under tuple and here in the second example you can see i've written raj 65 and 1.4 so you can have mixed data types also within tuples that that's not a problem the indexing is same as uh, strings and list so if i write a equals to 9 12 and 54 within the first bracket then it will be considered as a tuple and if we can see it with the help of the variable a or we can also see it with the help of the print statement next we should know that sorry here i have written list actually tuples tuples are non-mutable non-mutable means once you create the elements of a tuple you cannot modify it for example let's create a tuple here with the same elements that a equals to for a tuple what we will do we will consider the first bracket so if i write 7 comma 12 comma 16 and press the enter key so and then this is a tuple so if i just write a0 i'll get 7 if i write let's say a1 i'll get 12 similarly if i write a2 i'll get 16 now let's try to change the value of uh, a1 from 12 to 33 similarly 
So if I give a1 equals to 33, I'm getting an error. Why am I getting an error? Because tuples are immutable. Immutable means once you create a tuple, you cannot change the values of the tuples. So in situations which requires non-modifications of the values, you will use a tuples. And in those situations where it may be required to change the values after the list creation, then you will use list. Let's go to the last data type discussion for the day, which is the dictionary. So what is dictionary? Dictionary may be defined as an unordered set of comma separated key is to value pairs. So in a, in a normal physical dictionary, what you have? You have a the name of a dictionary. Let's say you are using a dictionary of the company Oxford. Then what will be the name of the dictionary? The name of the dictionary is Oxford. Here you have two more things which are key is to value. What is key? You can say that in a dictionary we have various words. These words are called as key and there are meanings of the words. The meanings of the words are referred to as values. Similarly, in case this type of dictionaries can also be made in Python and dictionaries are enclosed within the second bracket or the flower brackets. But there is a condition for using a dictionary. In normal physical dictionary, do you have two similar words? You may have two similar words, but you do not have exact two words. But two words may have the same meaning, but you cannot find two exact words in a dictionary. So the condition for using dictionary is that in a dictionary, no two keys can be the same. Always keep this thing in mind that within a dictionary, you should not keep two keys which have the same. Uh, so you cannot keep two similar keys and it will lead to an error. How it will lead to an error? It will replace one of the similar keys. What is the syntax for creating a dictionary? This is the syntax. You will give it the name of a dictionary. Then within the second bracket, you will write within comma keys to value pairs as much as you want. Like K1 is to V1, K2 is to V2, K1, K2, K3, all these are known as keys and V1, V2, V3, all these are known as values. For example, this is a dictionary. The name of the dictionary is vowels. Which are the keys here? A, E, I, O, N, U are keys and 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 are the values corresponding to the keys A, E, I, O, N, U. So this is the dictionary which we have created. So let's create a dictionary called vowels. Okay, so if I so we'll give the name of the dictionary, then equal to symbol, then within the flower bracket, we'll give keys to value pairs. Let's say the first vowel is A. A1, let's say the second vowel is B, B2, let's say, say the, sorry, let's give it as E3, let's take on the three vowels here for simplicity, let's say I equals to, let's say 2, okay. So here what I have done, I have created a dictionary for viewing it, you can just write the name of the dictionary and you can just view the dictionary. Now for viewing the value corresponding to a key, you can do it as follows. You will write the name of the dictionary, then within the third bracket, you will just key in the key. So if you write vowels E, you will get the value corresponding to that key. Now, in a physical dictionary, if you are trying to search for such a word which does not exist, can you find that word? No, you cannot find that word. So you should remember this thing in mind that in a dictionary, you should not search for such a key which does not exist otherwise it will lead to an error for example if i write vowels let's say p is there a key called p there is no key called p here so if i press the enter key i'll get an error also one thing should be kept in mind that no two keys should be the same values can be same so if i just write here i o o is to uh, let's say 3 again. So here see 3 has been the value 3 is for E also and it is for O also. So but there is no problem. So if I just display it there is no problem. So the values can be same but no two uh, but in a single dictionary you cannot have two similar keys. For example if I write A is to 3 then display 
fouls, you will see that one of the keys has not been taken. Okay, so here we have two keys as E, but what is happening here? We only one of the keys has been taken into consideration. So never give two similar keys in a dictionary. Okay, so the things which I have shown you, it's written in this particular slide. So let's revise the data types which are so data types can be classified as numbers, strings, list, tuples and dictionary. Now numbers can again be classified into integers, boolean types, floating point numbers and complex numbers. So that's all about the core data type in Python. I'll see you again in the next part of this particular chapter. Thank you very much.